my fellow Smubboys, Reggie here with another video, this time with a voice reveal. Yeah, not that impressive I know, but hey, at least it's better than non copyright music of a, a sped up version of my drawing. Even if, if you're new here, welcome to my little chunk of the internet. And if you're not new here, uh, welcome back, nice to see you again. Uh, do you want to talk about something? Over some cup of tea? I don't know. I'm just hanging out. I'm vibing. Yeah, uh, what are we going to talk, talk about now? Um, well, the drawing you're seeing on screen, or hopefully you're seeing on screen, <laughs> um, uh, is a drawing I did, I did for a contest on Amino. Uh, to be specific, uh, the Spanish Pokemon Amino. Which is a somewhat big community, has been there for a long time, that focuses on Pokemon and it's in Spanish, of course. <laughs> uh, the contest in question was uh, to make a drawing uh, given a specific topic. The topic that was, that was given to us uh, this precise week, because it went by weeks, uh, was a more was le more leaning towards a spookier kind of vibe, or gloomier. Basically, it uh, it said that it the drawing in question had to be a little more sad, or it had to convey an emotion more leaning towards a sad towards a sad feeling or a sad atmosphere. However, what I decided to do for this one. Is that uh, I wanted to do Mega Absol? Why? Because I wanted to. I have the right authority to do whatever I want. <laughs> and what I decided to do is I took the concept of Absol itself. That basically, to summarize it, uh, tells a story that Absol uh, always comes to cities or locations. Before, right before uh, disasters occur, I took uh, that this principle for Absol and applied it somewhat to Mega Absol and mm, twisted it, twisted it a little bit, and made a Mega Absol a somewhat symbol for hope. And I chose to symbolize hope because I wanted to recreate a scene where Absol was the only thing that was somewhat bright in the scene and everything around was dark and post-apocalyptic representing that uh, Mega Absol was the only glimpse of hope that was left and that Mega Absol came too late and now everything was destroyed and the title more or less that I have for this video like something I warned you prob is pr going probably to be that uh, basically foretells a story that um, I don't know how to say it <laughs> uh, it basically foretells a story that um, that they that met like normal Absol told to them already that they should escape by being in that same location they didn't listen and now they're destroyed and now that she and now that the Absol has come to rescue the few glimpses of hope uh, that in all the despair it's now too late so yeah that's a fun thing to talk about uh now now for the drawing itself what you're seeing at the moment uh i decided to begin with grayscale as an experiment uh, grayscale has always been like a hit or miss kind of kind of thing for me because the first time I actually tried it was a brilliant failure I hated it I hate that drawing and it and it was an art trade with a friend of mine and I absolutely hate that they got such a ugly drawing for the absolute piece of art that they drew for me but yeah, that's besides the point. The point is that is that I, I tried again. This is the second time I think I tried Grayscale. And this time it turned out great. And I think that for that, I think I have quite enough experience. I don't know. Maybe, 
probably probably not but if my experiences can help someone else with this problem i think this video has done its job uh, my tips generally with grayscale is that uh grayscale when you when you put all the details with the values and the shape and stuff and then put the color after uh, should it be used uh, that method should only be used uh, when the core part the core essence of the painting is not the color if the if the color combination like the color theory how colors work together how how different tones and chromas and values work together I sh I wouldn't go for grayscale if that's the core essence of your painting I wouldn't go for grayscale because in grayscale, uh, adding color feels like it's a bill to pay. It's something extra, some some icing you put over a cake. It's it's something that you can detach from a drawing, and the drawing will still have its essence. And sometimes, if you don't if you don't know how to do it exactly, uh, the the color can actually make the drawing less appealing in some some cases this usually happens to a lot of people it happened to me for example that that with the colors we try to combine by themselves if they were mixed manually they would look good but sometimes but when you make mix them with the values you already laid it down in grayscale it doesn't look good it looks horrible well that's what that's why i wouldn't touch grayscale if the color so the color is the most important thing. However, for this drawing, it actually worked. Why? Because uh, my core foundation, the core cool idea, was the contrast between Absol, the glimmer of hope, the brightness, the, aka the value, and the contrast between the Absol and the overall dark, dark values in the rest of the picture. And even though the drawing is pretty dark, I think that contrast can be seen, and I hope it does, because I spent unholy amounts of time making that drawing, <laughs> and and I didn't, and I don't think it paid off. Why? Because I didn't know, or well, I, I knew, I knew more or less, but I didn't convey what I was trying to convey, or at least I think so. Uh, what I was trying. What I was trying to convey was a, a feeling of sadness, and at least to me, it didn't come across that way. Which brings me to my next topic, <laughs> um, that is basically how to make, how to convey an emotion with your art. How do you do that? I don't know. I have no fucking idea. <laughs> I tried my best to do that, but it didn't work out. So that's a bummer. But. If I had any advice for people who were trying to pursue that, who were trying to achieve that, I would usually look at other artists who love, who are very, who are very talented at expressions and know how to, how to twist it into your own art. How basically learn the rules of what makes us humans uh, think about think about an emotion even though we cannot we cannot see it we cannot manifest it physically what makes us think of an emotion for example uh, if you want to convey happiness you would usually turn to happy jolly colors uh, very very bright stuff because that's what to us symbolizes happiness or if or if you don't want that or if you don't want that, if you want to subvert expectations, you can always use other combination of colors to get that emotion, but in other ways. The the ground the rule of thumb is that um, you you need to know what conveys what em, what colors or what basis uh, does do convey an emotion. So you can break them or use them to your advantage. Whatever you want to do, uh, it doesn't matter. Go nuts. Um, and uh, and now that I've uh, explained this more or less, 
I wanted to explain a little bit why I think it didn't work in this painting. Although the colors uh, were, be were pretty gloomy, pretty pretty dark, which, which worked somewhat for the painting, I think the message didn't get across because of the elements that are in the painting itself. For example, the apostle. The apostle has has almost a regal posture, a posture of of shame, not, not well, not shame, but like they're looking down at what's happening, uh, especially the hand that is reaching out to them, and they look at it like I want you, which. I actually took as the quote unquote inspiration for the titles and stuff and and yeah I just rolled with it even though it wasn't what I was trying to convey because reasons I guess and and although one element worked with the, the palette and the colors the rest of it didn't work because uh, basically I uh, took all the rules that basically make up what makes something sad or makes something unnerving and I threw them out the window because I just wanted to draw fur. Yes, I am bitchy like that. <laughs> Which brings me to my next point. Yeah, I have points in this shit. I am, I am thoroughly waking on this audio so you can all enjoy my shitty voice. What I was trying I was trying to convey here. Uh, last point, I swear. I swear I'll stop talking now. <laughs> uh, what happens when you don't when you don't achieve what you wanted with a painting? As my boy and the biggest uh, idol I've ever had, Ethan Becker says, um, failing is all about knowing what you did wrong and then going to the next painting. Then going and progressing, know what you did wrong, what you have to fix, and then fixing it on the next painting, on the next experiment, basing off of professionals' work and all that kind of stuff. That that's what I would advise for people who don't see a success when they try to do something. This this can apply for paintings, for for books, for for fan fictions, for animations, for all, for all I know, you could just be writing some furry, some furry fan fiction and fur affinity and still have it achieved how gay the characters are for each other. <laughs> uh, the point is that you know what you did wrong uh, and how to make it better. Uh, and how do you know how to make it better? Uh, primarily get inspired by professionals. People who actually made this for a long time, made a career out of what you're trying to do as a hobby or as a potential career. I don't know your life, and I don't, and I won't pretend to know. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. Learn from professionals. Uh, draw as much as you can, but also know what you're doing. Because if you know what you're doing and you're drawing every day, you're going to improve eventually. But you're not going to improve faster. And if you want to improve faster, you need to know an effective way to do that. You need to make decisions. You need to look up references. You need to study what professionals do and break it down to a very to very simple ground ground rules so you can work on them. So you can break them, or you can use it as tiny Lego pieces to make your own thing. I don't know what you want to do with that, but if you want to, I'd advise for that. Anyways, this is my this is the end of the recording, I guess. I think you're close to seeing the end result. If not, I'm very sorry. <laughs> but hey, thanks for coming by and listening to my trashy voice. Uh, see you later.